Hello and welcome back to Guide Hacking, this is Brage K and today we're going to be taking a look at how we can reverse Go binaries. A little bit of information about Go, it was designed by Google in 2007 and made available to the public in 2012. It's quite simple and easy to learn and can be cross-compiled to Windows, Linux and Mac OS. Now it is also statically linked by default. So all of the necessary libraries are included in the actual binary itself and that way it has no dependency issues. But this large size makes it difficult for us to do malware analysis on a binary or reverse engineer it. It also means antivirus products have uh, difficulty to detect malware and to actually reverse the binary, it's more time consuming. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you some scripts for both IDA Pro and Ghidra so that we can make our reversing of Go binaries a lot easier. These slides are from a talk done by Kujo and I really recommend watching and reading their blog and watching their talk but we'll just be looking at a few of their slides to illustrate how Go binaries work. Starting off with this comparison between a simple hello world file written in C and written within Go. When you build the one written in C it comes out with a size of 16 kilobytes so quite a small file and it is dynamically linked but it's not stripped and then also if we write the same hello world within Go we get a two megabyte file with all of the libraries included. So this means that just for one function that we want to analyze, we're gonna have to look through two megabytes of code. As we can see here, within C, you have 19 functions, and then within the Go binary, you have 1800 functions. Now, to avoid this, we can reduce the size of a Go binary by stripping it. So this will discard debugging symbols, it will reduce the size, no names for routines and variables, and it's more difficult to debug and reverse engineer. And usually malware files that are written in Go will be stripped because then the file size is smaller and they're harder to analyze and detect. So if we do another comparison of these strip binaries, we can see that the C hello world binary doesn't have too much of a difference but goes down to 14 kilobytes while the go binary has a massive difference from going from 2 megabytes to 1.3 megabytes meaning that we won't have as much information in the binary and usually because when we're doing reverse engineering a lot of the binaries will be stripped we want to see how we can recover this information and that's what we'll be taking a look at within this video so i have a piece of malware here but when I open it in Detector Easy, it isn't Detector as Go. Although we can take a look at the strings and scrolling down, we can see all kinds of different functions and things that would indicate that this is Go. If you saw these within a binary within the strings, then you should start thinking that the binary you're looking at may be written in Go. open that sample within IDA we can see within the functions window that all of these functions aren't named although there are a few exports here and commonly used Windows functions but if we go back to looking at the strings of the binary we can see all kinds of different information so why isn't this information being used within the debugging symbols and other part of the binary which would make our reverse engineering easier well this is because the binary we're looking at is stripped and I'm gonna show you some scripts as to how we can recover information about this binary to make our reverse engineering easier. So let's go on to the first script for IDA. So the first tool I'll be showing you is GoRaceSim from Mandiant. And this tool does exactly what we need. It is a Go symbol parser that extracts program metadata, such as the CPU architecture, OS, NDNS, compiler version, and so on. And then also function metadata, file name and line number metadata and embedded structures and types from a Go binary. So we can use this to extract all that information and then we can use the extracted information to put it into our IDA decompiler. And we'll use another script to do that, but first let's run this file. So the recommended flags to use is going to be tac t to recover type names, tac d to get the Go package names, and then tac p 
to get input file paths and then you just point it to your executable and we'll get the following example output so i've ran the go race sim on the sample.exe and put that output into output.json looking at output.json we have all of the information about that sample binary so let's get this into IDA. To get all of the symbols into IDA, we'll use gorysim rename.py, which is an IDA script. Within IDA, all you need to do is go onto file at the top left, then just go onto script file and click the Python file. That'll open up a file explorer where you just select the JSON from the gorysim output and that'll import all of the function names. Give it a bit because it's going to take a while. And once done, you can see on the left here, all of the functions have been renamed making our analysis much easier. And now that I've let the Python script finish running, I can take a look at the main of the sample and you can see how much cleaner it is, making our analysis so much easier. We can click into any of these functions and you'll see that they're much better and much easier to read because a lot of the functions within here are properly named. So let's do the same in Ida. So let's do the same in Ghidra. So I've got the following script from the Kudra presentation on Go. And these are the scripts that we'll put into Ghidra and use to recover some information. But there are four of them instead of the single one that I showed for Ida. These have the following functionalities of recovering function names, finding static strings, and finding dynamic strings. So it also can support type extraction as well, but those are used by all of the other python scripts so i've imported them in ghidra and also opened the sample and then i can just go and type in go scripts in the search and they should come up or just type in go and we can see all of the scripts here so what i'm going to do is just tick them and we can run those and those will run on our binary now that i've finished running all of the scripts we can go again into main main and look at the decompilation and just like Ida, it's much easier to understand. A lot of the functions are now named and all of the library functions and imports are now correctly named. It's also finding a lot of strings as well. So that makes our life a lot easier. I hope that this was a quick overview and good intro into how we can recover symbols from go binaries and i hope this helps you with all of your reverse engineering endeavors until the next video goodbye if you enjoyed this video a like would help a lot and subscribe to be notified of future uploads if you haven't already check out guidedhacking.com for a step-by-step -step introduction to game hacking and an ever-growing catalog of content thanks for watching and i'll see you next time